Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 23 of Chess Basics, Things Every Chess Player Ought to Know. Uh, today we're going to uh, continue looking at Rook and Pawn endings and the Philidor position, and uh, I thought I would illustrate this game, uh, this uh, topic, using a, a game that I played. Uh, this is an over-the-board game I played a couple of years ago, and um, it, it shows a lot of the uh, general techniques you use in Rook and Pawn endings as well as the specific uh, technique of the, the Philidor position. So um, I'm going to race through the opening uh, moves of the game. I just thought I would put that up here in case people were curious how we got into this position. I'm not really going to talk about the opening except to say this is the uh, Moran, the Slav defense, the Moran variation of the Slav defense. And um, pretty normal uh, play up until around here. And um, there's this weakness here, which my opponent exploits. There's this pin uh, indirectly. These pieces are pinned because my uh, queen is not protected. And so he starts to take advantage of it by pushing his pawn. And actually, I wasn't in trouble until, uh, yeah, one of these moves. Somewhere around here, I could have actually uh, just moved my queen and uh, been okay. Um, because... Uh, this move here uh, leaves the uh, the pawn hanging because uh, he's exploiting the pen. So my opponent has won a pawn, and he's really winning the game here, although I think he was a little bit over-eager to trade. And we trade down into an ending um, where I have drawing chances. And here, along here, he's still winning, but uh, I think it's this move here. Yeah, this... Uh, move here, which lets me uh, exchange off the rook and also some pawns, um, we very shortly get into a position which is actually drawn. So my opponent has gone from a winning position to a drawn position right here. Um, because it's four pawns against three pawns, all the pawns are together, um, and my king is in a good position and my rook is actively posted. So this should be a draw. And uh, Let's, let's go ahead and, and check out how it continues from here. Um, I, I play okay for a while. I uh, might be better off pushing the pawns, but when you push the pawns, you expose the king. But anyway, my general strategy is to keep my rook active, um, attack his pawns, and eventually to make progress, he has to push these pawns forward and trade them off. And um, I should also be pushing my pawns forward when I have the chance, but I didn't... Uh, I didn't see the chance too much along here. Um, right here, I pushed the pawn forward when I had a chance. And this is important. It buys you more space. So you really want to be as forward as possible with your king and your pawn here so that when uh, when black is trading down to his last pawn, his, his pawn is as far back as possible. And uh, the other thing I'm doing with my rook is I'm trying to keep his king cut off. And... Uh, just generally harassed and not able to make progress. And um, so I'm doing okay here, and, and the draw is pretty well in hand up until about here. Yeah, so this is a first point I want to look at in a little bit, little bit of detail. And I made some notes here, uh, you can see, uh, using the chess engine, of course, um, <coughs> to make sure this is okay. Um, so right now it's my move, and I played the move rook b7 check, which is not a losing move, but uh, there's a simple drawing move here, which is rook b6, just cutting his king off. And at this point, um, he really has nothing useful he can do. He can move his rook up and down. But, um, you know, as long as I keep uh, in contact with his pawn, keep it protected, um, he can't bring his king up to, uh, to help out with these pawns. So uh, when he pushes these forward, um, he, there's just no way for him to make progress with my king here and my, with his king cut off. So this would have been a simple way to draw it, and um, I just didn't take advantage of that. I played this move, rook b7 check, king g6, and then I played rook b5. And uh, already here, um, it's quite difficult for me. Although not yet losing, so, um, but I just want to show how I could have played better here. Um, so instead of rook b5, if I just uh, played rook e7, just continuing with the idea, come on, that move there, rook e7, continuing with this idea I had of 
harassing his king and his pawns from behind and keeping my king as far forward as possible. Um, so I'm attacking the e-pawn. He comes back to defend it. And I just drop back and stay behind here, attacking these pawns. If he attacks my king, I have to go back um, to the first rank, unfortunately. But um, we'll take a look at that. First of all, let's, uh, let's examine some of these alternatives, because this was kind of interesting. If I go forward here, this um, is fairly simple and kind of instructive how black can now win this. F4 check. And you see the problem with going forward. The king is the rook. The rook has cut off the king from going in this direction. Yep. And uh, the pawn's attacking the king. Uh, that pawn is, these, these squares covered too. So the king only has two squares it can go to. So if he goes to uh, e4, say, oh, I guess I should click over here. Yeah, king e4. Then, um, Rook e2 check is possible, and um, this pawn is protected. The king can't take it, so he's got to step aside. There. And, um, of course, if he had come down to uh, d3, then rook here check just picks up the pawn immediately. So then the rook comes here with check, d2 check. The king cannot go back to here because this is checkmate. <laughs> so the king has to keep walking away. And then the rook can come back here and attack this pawn. And uh, he's just going to win a pawn and two pawns up. He'll be able to uh, win this game without too much trouble. So king e3 doesn't work. Um, and king d3 also doesn't work. Although the computer, uh, the chess engine, doesn't find uh, figure it out right away. Um, and it's a complicated line. Uh, you can take a look at it here if you want to play it out. I'm not. That's not the main focus of this one. I'm, I'm trying to show some drawing techniques, not the losing techniques. So uh, King F1 dropping back, and um, he stays on the second rank, uh, trying to keep my king imprisoned. And there's just not a lot that he can do. His king can't really come forward because he'll lose this pawn. And so at some point he gives up and uh, pushes his pawn forward. So let's say he tries e4 first. Um, this is not the best try, but uh, it'll show some examples. So when he pushes his pawns, you trade. And now um, if he takes back, you take with the rook. So you've, you've got a, a easy draw there. Um, if he moves his king or his rook, then you're going to take the pawn. Um, so really his only try is to push that pawn forward. And now you can play this check and then move your rook away from the king's attack. Could go to any of these squares. And then uh, when he attacks the pawn, you don't even bother to defend it. You just drop down to the third rank. And now you've achieved the Philidor position that we talked about in the last, uh, the last video. So just to remind you that it's the Philidor defense or the third rank defense. Your king is in front of the pawn. Your rook is on the third rank. His king and his pawn are on the fourth rank, so they have not penetrated to the third rank yet, and his rook can be here or really anywhere on the board. Um, and you just stay in this position, and his king can't go forward, um, so eventually he can move his rook around, but eventually to make progress he has to push his pawn forward, and then when that happens you drop your rook back, and if he tries to come in with the king then you check him, and uh, the king just can't escape all the checks. So that's the Philidor defense. So that's after, uh, if he plays e4, if we back up, his more serious try here is to play f4. And after that, um, you just have to stand pat. Uh, he can try to inch forward, but you always check him from behind whenever his king tries to go forward. When he attacks the rook, you can move off to the side. And as he comes forward again, you come back to check him. So eventually uh, he gives up, but he tries to go around, but then you can attack, attack his uh, e-pawn. And of course, if the rook drops back to defend, then your king can come forward. So you want to give yourself as much space as possible. That's the important point about pushing that uh, pawn forward when you get a chance. You want to harass his king from behind, and you want to stay in front of it. And that's the way to draw. So, um, And always remember that Philidor defense. Whenever you have a chance to set that up, just go for it. So I did not play any of those moves. I played rook b5 and attacking his pawn. It's a logical move, and it's not yet losing, but it's um, 
setting me on a dangerous path here. Once again, I have to go back. It's dangerous to go forward with the king. His king comes over to defend the pawn, and I check this way from the side, and now his king comes forward. And unfortunately, I can't really stop his king from getting to this critical square here. Um, I try to, but uh, watch this neat technique. Um, you know, I move my king, I have my rook on the fourth rank trying to keep his king out. And what he does is he lifts his rook to the fourth rank, defended by his king. Now if I exchange here, um, this turns out to be a losing king and pawn ending with the two pawns against one and his king in a decent position there. So uh, I can't trade and I have to give up the, the uh, fourth rank. So now he's got command of the fourth rank and he can start uh, bringing his uh, king forward. And now this is really my last chance to draw the game. There's one very precise move that I have to make here. And uh, that move is rook to b2. I have to prevent myself from being checked back any further. So uh, this is not the Philidor position, but this is still uh, potentially drawing. Um, and uh, you'll see what's going on. If he moves his rook, um, I can't really move my king or my pawn. My only moves are with my rook. But I have enough squares that I can go back and forth. Uh, this is an example of why you want your rook on the long side of the pawn. I, I mentioned that last game. There's a short side and a long side and the rook just has a lot more squares to move in on the long side. So if he tries to move his rook to any of these squares to take squares away from your rook, you still have other squares you can go to and stay on the second rank there. So I'm just going to move back and forth uh, in response to any rook move and any king move is just a step backwards for him. So his only way to make progress here is to push on with e4. And naturally, you trade. You want to get down to the single pawn case and try and set up a Philidor position, which it turns out you can do with this move rook b3. And now, if he comes down to uh, check you here, you go here. I want to throw in rook h2. Oh, no, it was his move, rook h2. Um, anyway, yeah, this is yet another Philidor position. He can check up and down, but uh, I've got control of the third rank, and i got my king in front of the pawn, and got my rook on the long side of the pawn. So um, this is uh, a draw again. So there's one other um, rook b3, one other try. So after, yeah, f takes e4, rook to b3, grabbing the third rank. He can try and oppose on the third rank with this move, rook d3. And you have to uh, retreat to the second rank here. And, um, but once again, you can just stay on the second rank, and he can't uh, do anything to make progress um, with his king or his rook. Um, so his only choice is eventually to push this pawn. Now, he, may, he may make some rook moves first, but you just have to kind of wait them out. And uh, so you put your king right in front of the pawn. And uh, again, you stay on the second rank and he can't go forward here. If his rook comes here, you can just snap it off. So uh, so this is another draw, but um, you do have to be careful uh, of his rook coming around this way and trying to uh, check you and skewer your rook, but uh, when that happens, you start checking his king, um, similar to the, the Philidor defense. So this is a draw at this point. So if I had found this move, rook b2, um, and I still would have been able to hold the draw. But I played rook a3 instead, thinking that I wanted to keep the rook on the third rank. And now, because of his active king and rook, uh, he has a very nice uh, winning plan. So he comes here and checks me, and that drives me back to the first rank. So I think his winning technique is very instructive here, so, so pay attention to how he wins as well. Um, he steps aside with the rook because I was attacking it, and... Um, so I just have to waste a move here. I have, I have no constructive plans. Um, if I check the king, he's just going to take my pawn and win with three pawns against one. Um, he sneaks his king around the side, then using my pawn as protection. Um, I have no particularly good moves. In fact, he's threatening to uh, checkmate me. I can't move in front of his king. Um, I could stay there and just move my king, but uh, I moved here. And then he advances his pawn to f4 and uh, just taking away squares from me bit by bit. Um, I try to attack his pawn. I guess I could have stayed on the third rank, but I was thinking, you know, if he takes, I take, uh, maybe I can hold this position. 
um, but he just goes and attacks it with his rook and it turns out to be more effective to take with his rook. So I take the pawn on e5 and uh, he takes with his king. I put my king in front uh, and he checks me here and uh, I had this idea of defending with my rook but this just does not work because he takes the rook and then he steps aside. So uh, we back up. This whole idea I had of defending by uh, moving my king to uh, f1 so that uh, so that I could block the check with my rook uh, doesn't work. So uh, the other thing I might try here is, uh, let me see, instead of king f1, um, I could just try moving the rook, but but now he can check me and, and drive me away and uh, set up uh, something like a Lucena position. So uh, this is going to be uh, winning for black. So anyway, that's the moral of the story. If we go back to some of these critical positions here, you can see that what you want to do is you want to, uh, first of all, if you get the chance, you want to cut the king off entirely and, and end all this nonsense. Um, if that fails, then at least you want to try and stay active with your rook. Uh, and uh, a good way to stay active is uh, to check from behind. You have, as these black pawns move forward, you have more and more scope for your rook, so it becomes harder for his king to chase you. And, uh, and you need to stay in front of the pawn, even if it means being driven to the first rank sometimes. So, uh, but from here, you can hold this. And and the last thing, of course, is to remember to uh, set up the Philidor. Set up the Philidor defense when you get a when you get the chance. So let's go forward to the uh, Philidor defense here, and uh, we'll leave it like this. Um, so hope you guys uh, got something out of this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and uh, see you again next time. Bye.